besties i'm back again with another video and today we're going to be doing a feel on these five weeks old sets before we jump right into the tutorial i just want to say a big thank you to all those who participated in the poll as a result this video is put in real time okay so let's begin i'm coming in with my um flame beat and we're basically just going to take off the previous design and um, try to debulk the nail as much as we can. I started on 9,000 RPMs and I work my way all the way to 13,000, if I believe, to 13,000 RPMs. We're basically just taking off the um, previous design and a bit of the bulk of the nail as much as we can so this bit is meant only for the acrylics so you'd notice that when we're coming close to the nail growth we sort of just leave a small line of um, product of um, the previous design sorry when we come in with our sanding band we'll be able to clean up that, that area and then just see if we have any lifting and if we do we're going to address it so we're taking off the previous design and trying to debulk the nail as much as possible we do that to all of the nails and then we're going to come in with our sanding band for my sanding band i'm starting on 5000 rp rpms and i'm going to go over what is left of the previous design as soon as i file off i can see whether or not there is lifting so on this nail there's a bit of lifting and um one of the ways you can tell when there's lifting as well is if the um part that is lifted is usually more lighter in color than than um the rest of the nail so you can just see just how much the nail has lifted so the what you want to do is file over it um a few times or as much as possible to make it really thinned out and then you want to now start you want to angle your sanding band just like i did to create creases so there there you can see that's where we have the lifting so we're going to make creases on it so that we can use uh, I like to use my nippers next after like filing it down till it's thin enough for my nippers to just break it off and then um, I can like remove the lifted part and then just continue to work. So that's what I'm doing. I'm filing over um, the nail filing over it to make it flatter and then I've come in now with my um, nippers and I'm able to just break out the lifted part and literally I'm going to come back again with my e-file and now I will be able to file on the nail and you can see okay the lifting is done and we can just proceed as normal so that's that's what you do when you have lifting on the other nails um, I think there's one more finger that has a bit of lifting so you guys can see um, just what I'm talking about so on the other nails that are normal when you file you can see that it's, it's still practically flush with the natural nail it's it is like it, it looks like an extension of the natural nail so you just want to file off the previous design and um, flatten the nail much enough so that you can just continue working so on this nail the lifting was a bit more than the other one <clears throat> So um, the same technique that I did, file to flatten the nail as much as possible and then you want to just start cutting out the part that is, um, the part that is lifted and like I said you can easily tell when once you once you see a lifting you can easily tell so you, you just want to like make creases in the nail and then keep filing on it till it's thin enough for your nippers to fit in there and then just break it off.
all right so um i'm finishing up on the first face of the prep and then i did notice there was like a small white line on the nails on almost all the nails that had lifted in i'm not so sure if that's just you know dust packed in there or if there's still more lifting what do you guys think i guess i'll find out in the next appointment when she comes but anyways after like um the bulk in the nail the very next thing you want to do is to start to prep just like i'm doing you want to prep just as though you were doing a fresh set so we're going on forward we're going on reverse i'm using this thin cuticle bit and I'm working on 5,000, 4,000 to 5,000 RPMs actually. Um, next, you want to come in with your sanding band and then you want to file on the new grid. And if you, if you still feel like taking off more of the product, then by all means, you can. Sorry, you guys. There's just, um, I'm right now we're on like Easter break, right? And all the couples are home. I mean, even the birds are home. This bed has been making noise in my video like, gosh, I don't even know what to do again. And then now there's like, you know, neighbors just making noise. So I, I, I apologize. I really do. I've tried to do this voiceover in the most quietest of places, but somehow noise just seems to find me. So please, I apologize. Anyways, um, I'm going to say professional nail techs get in here. What do you think about having this white line on the nail after taking out the lifting? Um, when I sprayed alcohol on it, it seemed perfectly normal. Like it, it, it didn't seem like there was any lifting there and like the nails looked perfect. So I'm, I'm just confused as to why there's still that line it doesn't happen all the time i think this is the very first time i'm seeing something like this which is why i'm asking and for those of you who do not know i'm self-taught so um i really don't have all the answers i'm practically learning as i go so um to finish up my prep i'm going to nip at the dead skin which is what the previous bit i used was for um, I'm going to nip at the dead skin and clean up the cuticle area a bit better so it's presentable. Like I said, we want these nails to look like it never happened. So um, we're going to clean up the cuticle area and then we're also going to do a shape change. So I'm just going to, um, I, I'm going to call this a gentle transition <laughs> because the only difference between um, almond shape and stiletto is the sharpness depending on how you want to look at it so we're going to just nip um use the um, nail cutter to take out the um just the tip just the pointy end and then we're going to refile and reshape in these nails into almond and then it's going to look nice i guess yeah so we're going to reshape in all of the nails and then we'll um we'll clean up and start the application Right, so before we begin any acrylic application, you want to come in with your primer. I'm making use of the Glitz by Safet Nail Primer. I applied two coats before my acrylic application. All right, so I'm coming in with a medium size bead, and this bead is practically or basically, sorry, going to fill in my cuticle area and form back the apex that I have filed off or that isn't even there. So, um, what we, what we basically want to do or what we basically want to do when you're doing a fill is to restructure and rebalance the nail especially because if this nail has been on for so long or she's carried the set for so long there's um we're almost like a 
we're almost redoing the um entire set so i went in with the first bead which sort of filled the apex area and cuticle and then this next bead which is much smaller is going to um just balance out the free edge and just like um improve on the structure of the nail so we want this set, this set to be like i said like it never happened so that's just what we're doing with this acrylic application so i'm practically working with a bead and a half one medium size bead and then a very small bead to make the um nail look normal again and you don't have to work just exactly as i did if you feel like you can you need an extra bead then please go in with an extra bead um so yeah i'm just going to let you guys watch the entire acrylic application because i know there's people who want to see the acrylic application and um yeah so let enjoy the acrylic application process when it's time to file i'll come back in again Come to think of it i think acrylic application is the fastest process when you're doing a fill but i mean that's just me anyways i'm done with the application we're going to move into filing i did file the side walls 
um, off camera apparently I, st I stopped recording but I had no idea but when you're filing the very first thing you want to do is to file straight out you want to file in that direction just like I'm showing straight out and believe me when you do that you're practically cutting down your filing time in less than like honestly you're going to be done filing before you can even think about it so after filing all of the nails i'm coming in with my sanding band and this step is to seal in the cuticle i've had this question asked a lot of times how do i seal in the cuticle this is basically how i seal in the cuticle so um, i'm going to go over the cuticle area first and then i start to sculpt out my apex and then just um, you know like rebuild on the structure of the nail so cuticle area first and then you start to um, sculpt out the apex and work all the way to the free edge and like this is practically like this is just the technique that I use when I'm filing um, when I'm e-filing actually and then after this we're going to go over again with our um, hand file and we're going to neaten up our shape so I go over the side walls again and then even underneath the nail I just want to neaten up um, this entire set so there you have it you guys after filing we're going to go straight into the design I have her go wash her hands in the lamp I did forget and then after that we're going straight into the design Right, so we're going to be doing an all marble set except one finger is going to be um, the accent nail. So I'm coming in with all of the nude chocolatey um, colors that I can find on my shelf and we're going to just lay them all like this and swirl it out so that we have like our marble um, already established before we transfer it to the nail um, she's been wanting to do a marble set after the previous marble sets that I did so I mean why not all right so um, after like swirling like this you're going to come in with your blooming gel the point of the blooming gel is to help spread the polish and give it like a nice um, even like better patterns so um, you want to apply a thin layer not a thick layer because um the blooming gel like it, it it does spread so you you want to apply a thin layer you don't want it to like start spreading and pouring out everywhere all right so after that we're going to scoop out the um the marbled gel polish already we're scooping it out with a gel brush and then we're going to transfer it to the nail so when you're doing this you want to make sure that you apply you when you want to start transferring your polish you want to leave it thin or like a little space around the cuticle area and the whole point of this is just so that when the polish starts to spread it doesn't like spill and over flood the cuticle area that's just it so that it's um neat and then you don't even have to worry about cleaning up on like your sides and all of that so um yeah we're going to just do that to all the nails except the index finger when we get to that point i'll explain what i'm doing
before you pop the nails in the lamp don't forget to wipe on the side like i said the polish does spread so um, it can take away from the shape of the nail um next i'm coming in now for my accent nail i'm coming in with a bit of builder gel and um we're going to use it to do like a 3d um design and I'm, I'm sure a few of you have seen this um a lot and this is like my go-to 3d design so we basically just want to create like a ring like a yeah like a ring sort of on the nail the great thing about doing this is that it doesn't have to be um how do i say it doesn't have to be perfect that's the beauty of it you want to you if you can create a wiggly one that's even cuter and then after i r put that in i pop it in the lamp and then i come back and wipe it off and apply top coats the reason i wiped it off is because the builder gel does leave a very thick tacky layer that just messes everything up and i want to apply chrome powder on it the chrome is not going to stick at all so i'm coming in with this rosaline chrome powder after i apply top coat i cured in the lamp and then the rosaline powder is just going to rub nicely it does catch on top coat um but the annoying thing about this powder is it stays on like um on the acrylics it would stay on the acrylics but it would catch on the top coat you could later just wipe that off anyways um i'm doing that to the two index fingers because those are my accent nails and then i'm going to come in with nail glue and that's what i'm going to use to adhere my little germs and then i'm going to just put in some little pearly um flowers and stones just to make it look nice so um, after all of this, I'm going to cure. I'm going to um, apply top coat and cure in the lamp, and then we'll see the final result. Alrighty, you guys, let me know what you think. I'm going to stop talking here. Let me know what you think in the comment section. If you have any suggestions, please let me know. Um, I'll be I'll be very happy to answer any questions if there are. Let me know what you think about the set, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.